I am here on DeGraw Street, um, about to go into MCA Day, which is a tribute to Adam Yelk of the Beastie Boys. Adam died several years ago, way too soon. And normally I would not be going to MCA Day. It is not really my thing. Um, it is going to be full of Beastie Boys obsessives, and I am not in that category. Um, but my husband, who writes um, for his music blog called An Earful, will be performing there today. So I'm going to interview him, watch his performance, and also honor him. So this is Jeremy Shatton of An Earful. I'm going to ask him some questions right before he goes on. Um, this is pretty notable because you are performing publicly um, as a bass player for the first time in 30 years. You've been incredibly involved in music. Give me a two minute or one minute elevator speech of your band musical pedigree. <laughs> well, I introduced Mike Diamond and John Barry together and that was just guitar and drums, so I started playing bass with them. Okay. And we formed a band called the Young Aborigines um, who rehearsed a lot um, and played exactly twice in our international tour of two venues on the same night in New York City. Okay, why did you decide to do this today? Why did I, I decided to do this today both for Adam Yauk, who, you know, I still feel his loss, and also for John Barry, who died earlier this year. And if it wasn't for John and me and Mike, you know, none of this would have happened. Right. So, and he would have said, what are you... Why are you on the fence? Just do it. Just do it. So you're basically doing it partially to deal with a couple of pretty bad losses. Yeah. In a pretty short time. Yeah. Um, okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you go perform. And then I'm going to ask you some more questions afterwards. Okay. So good luck. Thanks. music to come here today to unleash the sounds better known as Professor Booty and the Sure Shots. <laughs> Professor Booty and the Sure Shots, the stage is yours for MCA Day. MCA Day, welcome Professor Booty and the Sure Shots. Couple songs with an electric guitar. Twenty-six years. <laughs> Like this. And well, this would make the difference because you played with the vaccines at Central Park Summer Stage. Yeah, but I played one song. But when we kick it to yeah, this song, them, but, yeah, but when we do this song, it makes it official. So we're going in chronological order. That one's from Check Your Head, my favorite album of all time. This one is from 1994's Ill Communication. I hope you like it. Exclusive. You guys want a world exclusive? Yeah. You know what, Jeremy? Maybe B 
Green Bay isn't interested in world exclusives. But before the Beastie Boys, there was a band called the Young Aborigines. Mike D, Jeremy, Kate Schallenbach, and John Barry, rest in peace. So I remember finding out about the Young Aborigines, and in the age of the internet, I would go online and I'm like, I can't find anything. So, Jeremy, we're actually going to play a Young Aborigines song right now. Can you go through the, the history of the song? Hey, everybody. So this song is actually, it's not a typical Young Aborigines song, because late in our career, such as it was, we were like trying different things, and I always liked it when bands would switch instruments. You know, like when uh, Bowie, I'm Roger, uh, there's that song, Boys Keep Swinging, where like everybody switches, and Carlos Alomar is playing the drums, and it's really wacky. So I thought, let's try that. So I picked up a guitar, and I wrote a song, and uh, so I would play guitar, and John Barry would play drums, and Kate Schellenbach would play bass. So what was Mike to do but pick up the mic? And this was actually the first time he sang anything. Like we had no idea that he even wanted to do that. So yeah, so we, we, we came up with this little song and uh, the lyrics are somewhat improvised. Um, yeah. And uh, we like to call it Asshole. <laughs> and earful. You are a music writer. You talk to musicians all of the time. You never stop growing. You are constantly listening to new music and you are the most eclectic musical consumer that I know. Um, what was your motto that you guys came up with for this band? What did you tell me this morning? Uh, I came up with this uh, as we sound oh, checked, okay. which was that we were most anticipated, least prepared. <laughs> okay, most anticipated, least prepared. You have just finished what I consider an awesome performance. Um, as I told you, your musical performer, your musical performer persona of the serious guy <laughs> continues to remain intact. Would you still consider yourself the least prepared? Having done the performance. <laughs> uh, well, compared to the other bands who do this for a living, sort of, uh, I you, you know, are working full time. Yeah, you but, are also uh, a fantastic you know, father. Look, if we uh, had, you have fifty million things in the pipeline, yeah. but you still rehearse. I think for what it was, we did a, we did a great job, and uh, I felt uh, occasionally got a little bit lost. Uh, for some reason, but I always found it back, and then uh, and that felt great. It was all intentional, as you and, said. Uh, yes, you know, we knew it was gonna be a little sloppy. I haven't played bass in 
you know, 25, 30 years. Right. And, uh, you know, so we've been blowing the rust off for the last six weeks or so. In so. my opinion, <laughs> it was tight. So in my opinion, it was tight. I love it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, the crowd did love it. And I love the storytelling behind it. Um, I would say, and this is very much early in the process, it's literally about 10 minutes after you stop performing. How do you think this is going to affect you musically going forward and your music writing and your blogging for a year? Just off the top of your head. Well, I always think that playing music informs listening to music. And I've always felt that my early years as you know, someone who played in bands a lot, right? Um, you know, definitely gave me some insight that you wouldn't necessarily have if you hadn't done that. Right. So this was a really great kind of touchstone back to that stuff. Right. And but it was also very interesting to put myself into the mind of Adam Yao. That's how I kind of saw it because he wrote those bass lines, and uh, they got some tricky little things in them sometimes, or some you know original stuff. And I tried to honor their spirit and to just kind of like be in his head. Yeah. And so that was a really interesting experience because I never really played cover songs before. Right. So that was, you know, an instructive experience, I would say. Um, um, I also have to tell you that I really like the song Asshole <laughs> and the lyrics to the song Asshole. And everyone is an asshole. So that is, you know, that is one thing, one takeaway yep. from this. And it informed my musical experience. Um, I was coming here strictly for your benefit, but found myself they're really getting into it and that the Beastie Boys are a little bit more of, in terms of my history, are a little more prominent than I thought. Right. I actually knew the words to several of the songs. <laughs> so you really can't get away from it. Yep. Uh, thanks a lot for doing this interview.